Hey everyone, this is Mike Andrakovic. So I just want to jump in on this broken spaghetti problem. This is actually a favorite of mine for quite some time, and it seems that we keep bouncing back and forth. Uh, in fact, a lot of people are landing on 0.386 for the probability, but it's actually one quarter. And I think that the common error seems to be in the decision to let force that first break to be greater than one, because there's no reason it has to be, and we do lose some generality there. So I posted a solution in two dimensions uh, earlier. You can take a look at that by searching back on my tweet. I'll put a link in the description as well, but I figured I'd make a video to show it in three dimensions because uh, GeoGebra can do that now, so it's kind of fun. So in three dimensions, what we're looking at here is this purple plane is the plane x plus y plus z equals 1, right? So for all values of x, y, and z, uh, I'm letting x, y, and z be the lengths respectively of the segment. I'm assuming the segment to be one unit long, and you can, of course, scale that to any length that you want, so there's no loss of generality there. So anywhere on that plane, x plus y plus z equals 1, but of course we want to restrict ourselves to only positive values. If we do that, then we lose most of that plane, and what we end up with is, in fact, the triangle on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the plane, and we'll just keep the triangle now. So that triangle is all of the values where x plus y plus z is 1, and they are all positive values. So we're restricting ourselves to the, the whatever the analog of the first quadrant is in, uh, in 3 space. I guess I should know that, but I don't. So here's what the triangle inequality tells us. We have these three equations here, right? So these are e equalities. Of course, the triangle inequality says that any side is less than the sum of the other two, but uh, I haven't figured out how to graph inequalities in three dimensions with GeoGebra yet, so we're just going to work with the strict equalities, and we'll do the inequality on our own. So if I take one side, x equal to y plus z, then that gives me this plane here. And you can see a nice clear intersection with that plane and our sample space, which is the triangle from the three unit points on the axes. I can go ahead and add that intersection in, and in fact, I'll take away that plane, right? So that'll leave us with this here. So this is the line where x is exactly equal to y plus z. And of course, if we go in this direction, then x is going to be less than y plus z. The second plane that we get from the triangle inequality is y equals x plus z. That will give us this plane right here. Again, this is the equality. We're, of course, looking for the inequality. Where that plane intersects with our sample space triangle is all the values where x is, y is equal to x plus z, and also the sum of them equals 1. So again, I'll add that intersection and take the plane away. And there we have that second line showing up there, right? So now we have both of these uh, on the right here and on the left. I'll do this again with the third inequality from triangle inequality, z equals x plus y. That gives me that plane and, of course, that intersection. And I can go ahead and pull the plane away. And we're left with the original sample space carved into four sections. Now, if you take the time to think about the axes and the inequalities going on here, I'll go ahead and stop to set a nice... I hit the wrong button. I'm going to go ahead and stop this at an appropriate uh, angle here. Let's see. So that's probably a pretty good view, maybe sort of just a little bit from the side there. So these are the lines of inequality, excuse me, of equality, right? So this is the boundary of when we get a triangle. And if you take a little bit of time to think about the axes and what's positive and what direction we're talking about, then this space inside of here is where you're going to get a triangle. This is our feasible region of our sample space. These other four sections are the non-feasible regions, where if you go in this direction, x is too big, or this direction, y is too big, this direction, z is too big. I think those are the right axes, but... Uh, you know, one of them uh, corresponds with each of these coordinates being too large, and any time you're inside here, you get a triangle. Uh, so these triangles are all congruent, relatively simple to prove that. There's a lot of symmetry involved in this problem. And so what you're looking at is a sample space of this triangle. It breaks up into four regions. Only the center region is going to give you a feasible solution. So you've got a one out of four chance. Now, a really interesting follow-up to this question is to ask the question, well, if you're in here already, right, so assuming that you get a triangle, what's the probability that triangle ends up being an acute triangle or a right triangle or an obtuse triangle? But we're going to have to settle on the probability of this being one-fourth before we can continue on to that problem. So if you have any questions, you can tweet me at uh, Mike Andrakovic. You can probably follow that right from the link here. Or you can message me through YouTube and uh, let me know what you're thinking. Thanks. Have a great day.